talk a bit about the gap and how you guys quantify this gap and if there are trends maybe internationally that have motivated the institute to really bring these things home yeah basically um, um if you are you you, you you are to quantify first of all you, the, the gaps in human capital uh people we need for um um in order to, to build sufficient housing at cost at high Basically, this is a combination of uh, the skills and the people. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property page. It is 7 p.m. and you know what time that means. It means we are talking everything property related right here. Um, and if you're joining us for the first time, this is the place where we give you on the past information about anything property related. We are talking investing, we are talking buying, we are talking selling. We are talking how to grow your overall property portfolio. So if you're joining us for the first time, hope you enjoy your stay here with us and you're definitely going to enjoy this. Trust me and if you're joining us on the twitter spaces thank you also for joining us and we are looking forward to hearing from you tonight so if we are uh, as the conversation goes on send us your questions send us your comments drop those green hearts let us know that you are here so tonight I am with Henry Lukenge, who is going to be speaking to us about how developers can um, use, can now model hyper-realistic building projects, you know, to show prospective buyers, sellers, and people who just really want to go into the property industry. So Henry, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It is an absolute pleasure. We, you know, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking technology, property, uh, uh, technology and property rather, you know, property tech and initiatives, apps and things that are coming into the industry that are helping the industry to do things better. So specifically tonight, we are looking at how um, developers can now uh, model hyper-realistic uh, projects and building projects, you know, how they can um, use augmented reality and all of these beautiful things. So you are from um, Trident Engineering Institute and you guys have just launched um, into South Africa this upskilling where, where young people can use building information modeling, you know, to change the way um, property has, has been shown over the past couple of years. Can you just talk us through um, what, what your, your institute does and what you guys are hoping to achieve with, with this program that you guys are running? So basically... Being more building information modeling is... Um, um, an application within the built environment that um, um, focuses on optimization, efficiencies, and um, 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 uh, facilities management. You've got two modules. One is on the building side. One is on the facilities management side. So it means that um, through, through the acquisition of these skills at every level um, of a project, right, you've got the ability to, to see its cost, and time implications as you change, you change it or modify it, or as you bring um, interdisciplinary skills to bring a building from from conception to completion, right? And then um, uh, the also the other piece about it is that uh, then then you go from the completion to ongoing management of the building as a living entity through um, facilities management. So um, what what this gives you is um, a holistic approach to managing a portfolio of buildings or one building depending on what you're looking, what what you're trying to achieve. Now, our, um, our, um, um, our key um, um, entry or, or drivers for this is that um, um, there is um, 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 an extreme skill shortage uh, in build, building information modeling landscape, not just South Africa, but around the African continent. And uh, that's driven by the fact that um, 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 talent isn't a lot, right? And it's the way it is. It is restricted people at postgraduate level. And what we're saying is that um, 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 these skills don't belong at postgraduate level. They belong at um, um, undergrad and post high school, post -mater even pre matric TVTE, because um, uh, the skills that um, being technicians have got, right, um, um, can are applicable in day to day um, day to day affairs of build of managing and constructing managing construction projects, irrespective of size. You could uh, do this in um, a single unit, multi unit, um, large facilities like an airport, or um, um, you could use um, like Revit or facilities management skills um, in um, um, uh, multi site, for example, refrigeration sites uh, in warehousing or 
or um, what's he called, um, retail, right? There is um, um, a broad landscape where the skills are usable. And that's why um, um, we, we, we're trying to create, a, we're trying to bring the skills down to the level where an everyday person can pick up the skill set and then use it to um, obviously participate in the economy at a higher um, price point. Sure. And if we were to really talk about the discipline and talk about um, building information uh, modeling, what, how, would, how would you describe it to the layman in terms of um, what it does and its benefits? Because um, f- to someone who is, who, who is a property owner or is looking at going into property, um, how does it look for them? Yeah, basically, is what it does for you. Uh, for example, um, uh, let's say you've, um, um, you're trying to um, build um, a house in the ground up, okay? Normally, you get one, um, um, uh, two, what, uh, what's it called? Um, 1D, which is um, 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 your site plans of an architect, right? Then you use those with um, the quantity surveyor to go build a house, okay? Then um, um, as you get into... Um, um, the construction phase, things come up within 4C, mm. right? Then you get cost overruns and time overruns and all that stuff, right? However, uh, through the application of BIM, um, you go 2D and 3D, um, which means that your entire building, right, is molded into a living being when it, like a 3D image of the visual implication of a building when it's finished. So you can then see where the plumbing is going to go, where the electric is going to go, where the, um, the paint has to look, don't even move it on a computer to optimize sunlight and all, of, all that stuff before you build it. So then um, uh, once you get in the building of it, you can literally tell someone you want the pipe to walk this way, not that way, because if it does that way, this thing, these are the implications, right? So then uh, for the for, for macro projects, which we call a smaller project, like one unit house or um, warehouse, uh, these things are important because uh, then you avoid cost overruns, time overruns. You also avoid repetition where a pipe went where it shouldn't go and you have to fix it. Mm. Right? So this way you save the money at like a macro level. Right? But at, um, at a large um, um, micro level, uh, industry, industry scale projects, uh, you, you could think about the fact, think, just imagine um, um, a multi unit site where you're doing, um, 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 I don't know, let's say uh, 20. 20 or 50 stories worth of building and you're running multiple pipes across um, multiple square feet, right? Like plumbing, electrical, HVAC, and, and what's it called? Um, 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 other pieces like lighting, right? Then um, um, having um, a 3D model of everything as it fits. And then, and then having uh, one or two people who are able to um, direct all trades on site to work concurrently without um, stepping on each other's toe, right? And helps uh, the builder or the, the project manager and the builder, right, achieve efficiencies without um, being um, um, in the face of everyone. Because um, uh, BIM will give you a 3D image of what everyone has to do when they have to do it, so that as they do it, other people can do what they're doing, and everyone moves in the same direction, right? Um, um, so mm-hmm. that um, um, your, your, your goals are, are attained on time and on cost. Sure. This this already sounds like um, a revolutionary um, piece of technology that can be used. I just want us to talk a little bit about the gap um, that you guys noticed in South Africa in terms of this. So you spoke a little bit how um, some of these skills are going to be broken down and children as young as um, in high school can already start picking some of these skills up. And how does the gap currently look? When Because I know that you guys just launched um, this week your offices and uh, the, for the Institute on the 26th. Uh, let's talk a bit about the gap and how you guys quantify this gap and if there are trends maybe internationally that have motivated the Institute to really bring these things home. Yeah, basically, um, um, if you are you are, you, you, you are to quantify, first of all, you, you, the, the gaps in human capital, uh, people we need for, um, um, in order to, to build sufficient housing at cost, at high, basically, there's a combination of uh, the skills and the people, right, to sit, to build substantial housing portfolios to fix house, um, access to housing across the region, not just in Africa, but all across Africa. Um, you find that, um, 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 we don't have um, ad, ad, an adequate supply of um, building information te- technologists across the landscape, from plumbing to HVAC, refrigeration to general building modeling. Like across the landscape, we don't, we don't have them. Um, here is why. Um, 
because um up to up to how we guys have come through um um uh, these skills are being retained at postgraduate level. So um, if you look at that and ask yourself um, how many of us have degrees, right? Not many of us have degrees, mm. regardless of how you look at it, right? So if not, not many people have degrees, then we've got a skill set that is essential to your economy, but only postgraduates are doing it. That means um, uh, those skills are being retained within a small percentage of people, right? Mm. So then... Then, then, because of that, you find that uh, the the ability of, um, of of an economy to meet its housing stock needs is limited because you don't have the skills. You don't have enough skilled people to perform the tasks on time and on budget, mm. right? So that's just the one piece because that was Then on, on, also on the, on 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 the human level, it is uh, these these um, um the the human cost of, uh, of of unskilled people in a country, okay. Mm. Uh, that human cost comes in terms of um, uh, youth unemployment and everything comes with it from urban crime to, you know, everything you see on the streets, right? It, like any, any African city has many unemployed, un, many unemployed young people, right? And, and all you're lacking is the skill set they can monetize quickly, right? Mm. So what, what, what we set out to accomplish was I pick up this um, complex item and then um, put together a group of professionals to... Um, put together the curriculum that is broken down into pieces that at, at, at the core level addresses the key components someone needs to um, to attain excellence um, in this skill set so they can take it to the market quickly, right? That's why um, our setup involves um, um, several certificates, each of which is underpinned by industrial placement, mm. so that at any level you can pick up that skill set with the placement and then you can go into a skill trade and charge five times the price, five times the rate you'd have charged if you didn't have it, right? And you don't have to wait for three hours to do it. Sure. Right? So then uh, the idea, the, 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 the whole, the, the, the overall um, objective is that um, we try to um, 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 help the building industry attain two goals. One, um, um, obviously um, fix the human, human capital shortage. Uh, while um, 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 participating or contributing to creating um, a more even economic field or widening, or widening the opportunity gap for everyone to play with it. Because, um, like, uh, because we fix the access point at the bottom, we're going to have many people from all walks of life participate in this field that would, wouldn't normally participate in it. Mm. No, definitely. And that's, that sounds like an advantage to, to a lot of young people who are in South Africa who may even have engineering um, qualifications but yeah. have not been able to really go into the field and really use them. My next question is really about it being expensive because, you know, when someone thinks construction and thinks um, engineering, we are really thinking this is an expensive thing and, you know, combine all of that with the use of technology and the, the setup cost that comes with technology. Let's talk about um, its expensive or how expensive this could be for one to either go into and also to maintain because you spoke about how there's, there's, there's a setup and there's also maintenance and management of property. So let's talk a bit about how the expenses. Oh, uh, basically, um, um, see, um, the, the beauty of, of what we're doing is that um, you could... Um, um, get a diploma and be an expert in everything, or pick up certificates and be an expert in a few things. Mm. Then you could participate at any level of the building, depending on the skills you've got. Okay? So, for example, uh, you may be an AutoCAD technician, just doing 3D models of, of uh, what's it called, construction projects that architects have done. Right? You may be an um, AutoCAD and ready technician who does combines that with piping and plumbing or HVAC and plumbing. Then you could do all three where you combine um, electrical plumbing and, and then painting and everything to give the building um, the holistic look where you're the engineer on site having all trades, all trades communicating to each other. Right? Sure. So then at every level, your pay rate rises depending on uh, the skills you've got. Right? Mm. Now, for, 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 the, um, for the, um, the buildings or now, or corporate company owning... Um, um, a stock of um, units or facilities to maintain, right? You, um, um, your efficiencies come in having enough people who are skilled, who are skilled to give you this skill set at a price point that is lower than that of a postgraduate person doing it. So what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. 
because then you've got um, potentially um, students out of high school having these skill sets. So you don't have to retain a postgraduate charging you five times the run per hour because of the postgraduate. Mm. Because the skill is now in a hand of someone who holds the graduate but who has the ability. So, so the, the, the point is um, um, just, just think about it as um, um, having, for example, your pipe blocked and you bring a guy with a degree to fix it. They're going to charge you, say, 5,000 rand. These, these are all hypothetical numbers, okay? Sure. But if you brought in a, a plumber, they will charge you 1,000. But it was the exact same thing. Sure, sure. Right? So our approach to this is that um, we need to, um, if you lower the barriers to, barriers to entry into this field by, uh, like I, I didn't say this before when the podcast began, um, uh, through, uh, because you've got hiding and we've got our trust, which is the need of trust, mm. um, which is, under, un, uh, which is um, underwriting the costs of um, um, developing the curriculum and getting it approved by SACA and everyone else locally. Mm. Right? So that once, once that process is completed, we'll go to an international curriculum, we will adapt it to, South African, to, to the South African landscape and, and the needs that are local. Mm. Then we end up in that with, with our, what's it called, um, 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 uh, partnerships with the equivalent, with the likes of BSI, who um, uh, in, in this field, they help um, um, organizations that put together curriculums mm. to map those curriculums to uh, international standards, mm. right? So then our graduates pick up a local skill set, right, that has international reputation. That means that um, once at any stage of the process, if they graduate and have a certificate, they can, they can work on projects globally because they've got international certification that, that underpins what we're doing. Right? So then um, mm. uh, when you combine um, um, these pieces with the fact that the charity has underwritten, our foundation and charities have underwritten the development costs, Right, mm -hmm. then um, we can then turn around and as opposed to being um, 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 a for-profit business trying to make a lot of money um, off this IP, um, we've turned around and, um, and, and provided it to the Trident um, Engineering Institute at no price, yeah. right? Because uh, the objective is that um, um, we need to, 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 to empower many young people to pick up the skill set to get themselves um, up the economic ladder. And while doing that, solving the housing need. Yeah. Definitely. Right? So that, that's really how this fits. But basically, because, of the, mm -hmm. because we've been able to under, underwrite the cost of development without expecting a return on investment. Yes. Right? We're able to uh, bring down the cost of so the entry cost to this program, the lower than average. Like a typical um, um, three, four hour seminar in one of these things, about 20,000 run. Just, um, just doing one or two things and not of that. Right? And we, we are putting together a whole module for about 5,000 rand that gives someone, get someone, um, 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 for example, um, a training that, in, that then gives them the skill set, right? To be able to be an autocad technician on the site without having a degree. Sure. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you for sharing your insights with us. I'm sure if as, as a property owner, um, someone who, who's willing to, who's looking to build and not buy, or someone who's buying and wants to know how the building is structured, man, th this is really uh, incredible for them to, to look into and really start adopting. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good evening. You too. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Wonderful. And just like that, we have, we have reached the end of our conversation tonight where we are speaking about how you can take technology and really take your business to the next level. You know, we've been talking about how property is a business and how technology is going to help you to grow your portfolio, you know, to start and get into the portfolio and get that first property or to just manage it and make sure that it's growing from strength to strength. Until the next time I see you right here on the Private Property Podcast, thank you for joining us tonight and have a good night. Thank you.